Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about how to get more matches on Tinder or dating apps in general. Dating apps, especially if you're a guy, can be a very frustrating experience. I also know the female experience on dating apps is complicated as well, but the male experience is frustrating and irritating and it can often feel like you're getting nowhere. I wanna share some of the things that I found super useful in order to actually get dating apps to work for me. Total disclaimer, I used to be very much against dating apps. I thought that they were useless. I thought that there was no way that anyone could meet on them and nothing good was gonna happen out of them and especially not, you know, those grimy apps like Tinder. And I met my girlfriend on Tinder and we've been together for about a year and a half now and it is going great. So <laughs> I really can't discount the dating apps anymore. And so instead I wanna share some advice that I have for you as the viewer to actually make these work for you and some things that worked well for me. All right, let's jump into it. All right, number one, just understanding that if you're a guy, you're up against a lot of people. There's many more guys than girls on dating apps, especially Tinder. And Tinder is not very public about these numbers. And so different sources are gonna give you different numbers. But it seems like it's somewhere between the one in five or the one in two female to male ratios on these apps. Meaning that for every woman, there are between two and five guys on the platform. So this means that no matter who you are as a guy, you're just up against a lot of competition. There's just a lot of other guys on these apps trying to get women's attention. So I think that's something just to put out there initially, just to understand that like, okay, there's a lot of other people on these dating apps. Maybe part of the reason I'm not finding success is just like a pure numbers volume game. So. Don't get too down on yourself just yet. Number two, only have great pictures on your dating app. You are judged by your weakest link. So what I mean by this is, let's say you have five pictures on your dating app and the first four are fantastic. And the fifth one, like it's just not a good photo of you or it's really weird or there's just something very off-putting about the picture. You're going to be judged by your weakest link. By removing that fifth photo from your dating app and just having the four photos, you're actually gonna be a stronger candidate. So more doesn't always equal better. You wanna make sure that whatever photos you have, even if it's just three photos on your dating app, that they're all super solid. None of your photos should be bad. They should all be really, really good. And they should all show off your personality to some degree. If you're not sure if your photos are good, so like I have a really hard time judging if pictures of me are good pictures or not, I ask female friends of mine, like, hey, can you take a look at these? Which ones do you think make me look the most attractive? And you could survey two or three different girls that you know, and they're gonna be honest about like, that one you look really good in, and that one you look terrible in, and I might look at both of those and not know which one is which, right? So it's often useful to take the advice of one or two close trusted peers just to give you a little bit of guidance when it comes to the photos that you have up on there. Also take time to take really good photos. If you have an iPhone or another camera that has like a portrait mode, take some nice photos of yourself in good locations. When you're dressed up for something, you're going out to dinner, have a friend snap a couple pictures of you just so you start to have some pictures of yourself. The Tinder pictures should not all be selfies. So having some photos that other people have taken, it's just gonna make you look a lot better on the app. So going back to the numbers game, that you're just up against a lot of competition, this means that you should be actively using the app, right? So one of the things that I like to do when I was on dating apps was dedicate a portion of time every day to just max out the number of swipes that I had available. Tinder and Hinge were kind of the two big ones that I really liked. So I would just go through and there was a certain number of likes that I was able to give and a certain number of right swipes that I could give on Tinder. And I would do that every single day. That's just increasing my chances, going through and swiping right on the people that I wanted to connect with. It just started to increase the pool of people that I had available. I treated it a little bit like a job, like, okay, I'm going to try to find someone. It's not like they're just gonna magically fall on my lap. I need to be doing some kind of outreach. And the more outreach I do, the more likely it is that I'm gonna find someone that I connect with. Dedicating a portion of time every day that I'm swiping, maybe I get some matches, maybe I don't, but I'm actively trying to find someone. It's not a mindless passive thing. I'm sitting down and I'm really trying to actively swipe and connect and meet someone. So that's super, super important. The likelihood is that the first person you match with is not gonna be the person who you hit it off with. So accumulating lots of matches is usually a good thing, especially if you're a guy. In the ways that you can, be honest about your intentions. If it is clear from someone's profile that they're looking for something long-term and you're not looking for something long-term, 
don't connect with them. Vice versa, if it's very clear that someone is not looking for something serious and you are looking for something, something serious, don't expect them to be the person that you're going to get something serious from, right? People do a lot of signaling about what they want and it is very easy for us as humans to say, oh, I know what you want actually. Like if you meet me, then maybe you're gonna want a long-term thing. No, you're not the magic bullet. You're not the thing that is going to make people change their mind. Like listen to the signals and the signs that people are putting out there and be respectful of those signals and signs. If you're looking for something long-term, look for people that are looking for something long-term. If you're looking for something short-term, look for people that are looking for something short-term. There's lots of people in both buckets, I promise you. Once you actually do match with someone and once you are messaging with them, one of the things that I like to think about is getting off app as soon as possible. Now for me, I was never someone looking for something short -term. Term. I was always looking for a long-term partner. And so when I would be in conversation with someone, I would try to only have a couple of interactions in the in-app chat before moving it off app. The reason for this is that women on dating apps get a lot of messages. <laughs> in those chats, right? Pretty much everyone they match with is gonna be sending the messages. It gets overwhelming, it gets confusing. There's a lot of people in there. If you can move off app, that distinguishes you to some degree from the rest of the group. So I would never give out my phone number, but I would use Instagram as a great way to message with someone. So after a couple of interactions, I would say something like, hey, I'm not looking for a hookup, but if you'd like to connect further, I'd love to chat. Maybe we can talk on Instagram. This is my handle. Super simple, right? And a lot of times people would say, yeah, sure, sounds great. And we would end up messaging back and forth on Instagram. And from there we would schedule the date. So the first date that I went on with my girlfriend, we were messaging back and forth on Instagram ahead of the date. And after the date, she gave me her number. We just started talking through text after that. But initially it was just sort of moving someone to Instagram as a way to message. The great thing about Instagram is that it gives a much more full sense of your personality and who you are and vice versa. If you're messaging with someone else on Instagram, you get a full picture of who they they are, what's going on in their life, what is the library look of the last five or 10 or 12 years of their life on Instagram. So another great tip of what you can do if you're, if you're messaging someone and you've moved to Instagram is that you can post Instagram stories when you're doing cool things. If you're at a party, if you're at an art show, if you are making dinner with some friends, if you're taking your dogs on a walk, whatever it happens to be, you can take an Instagram story, whether that's a video, whether that's a picture, and put it up there. And that person, because they're messaging with you, is very likely to then see that Instagram story. So they're given a peek into your world and it's sort of like, hey, is this someone that I would wanna be with? Now, there's a big caveat under all of this is that you also need to be someone that people want to date, right? If your entire life is sitting on the couch and watching TV, like who's gonna wanna date that person? You need to have things going on in your life that people actually like. So if you don't have any friends and you just hang out all day on the couch and watch TV and really don't do anything with your life, who's gonna wanna date you? Like seriously, I'm sorry. In that kind of scenario, I think that being on a dating app is not your issue. It's figuring out the rest of your life, right? If you don't have a lot of close connections, you don't have a good hobby that you really enjoy, you don't have something in your life that you're really passionate about, then figure that stuff out first. Before you find a partner, figure out who you are on the inside. Maybe that's joining a local club or volleyball team. Maybe it's a bird watching group. I don't know what you're into, right? Whatever the thing is that you happen to be into, leaning into that interest and finding other people that you can connect with through that. If you're not hanging out with people a lot, start to make new friends in the place that you are. Go out more, connect with people more. And also this doesn't have to be with other people. Maybe you're really a solitude kind of person and you want to paint and sip tea and do pottery all day. Like that's also totally cool, but do those things, right? Indulge in your passions, do the things that make you excited, do the things that make you enthusiastic. And then you're able to show that to the world. It is very easy to connect with people who are passionate and are driving toward a goal and want to do something actively with their life. If you are struggling to match on dating apps, I think part of it is a numbers game. Part of it's a pictures game. Part of it's just being able to present yourself in a way that people actually connect with. But another big part of it is making yourself into someone who people want to date. And I don't mean by doing that inauthentically, truly, 
growing into someone who people actually want to be around. It's an important life skill in general, but it's also very crucial when it comes to dating. So I hope you guys found this video useful. I hope you get more matches on Tinder or whatever dating app you're using after watching this. Please let me know what your experience is like down in the comments below or any other tips or tricks that I didn't talk about in this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.